January 21st, 1967, as I said, I'm living in a little two-bedroom apartment in Berkeley on Wheeler Street. Phone rings, and my buddies called me up, and they said, um, we're coming by to pick you up. We're going to this meeting. And I said, what meeting? Well, the meeting was a meeting in the home of then the first and only African-American member of the Berkeley City Council, Wilma Sweeney. <clears throat> and he was bringing together all the, quote, black leaders in Berkeley to his home to select a black unity candidate as a candidate for the Berkeley City Council. The background was there were four candidates who were going to run for the Berkeley City Council in it's a nonpartisan race, although everybody always knew who the Republicans and the Democrats were. Well, there were two Republicans running for re-election, two Democrats. On the Democratic side, one man and one woman. And the man decided that he would not run. He had become an icon in Berkeley and I think was, became a member of the city council, maybe even when he was a student at Cal Berkeley, Art Harris. And he went to the Democrats and said, one black person on the Berkeley City Council is tantamount to tokenism. I would be honored if the Democratic Party supported a second black person to the Berkeley City Council and let the black community choose. And whoever they choose, I want the Democratic Party to endorse. That was the backdrop. So this meeting was a meeting to choose that candidate. So my buddy said, you know, your name's been thrown into the hat because I was a young activist at the time. And <clears throat> so I told him, <laughs> not interested, brother. You know, I'm going to school. I'm going back to Brandeis, get a Ph.D. I'll be back to the movement in two or three years. But I'm going back to get this Ph.D. Well, you know your friend. No, man, you're going to the meeting. Be ready in 20 minutes. So sure enough, 20 minutes later, doorbell rings. Come on, man, let's go. So I told my wife, I said, let me placate this cat. I'll go to the meeting. I'll be back about 9, 10 o'clock. So I get to the meeting, and there's six other guys who really wanted to be the candidate for the Berkeley City Council. And I did not want to be. But I was one of the names that they had selected. So there were seven people that they wanted to question and et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, I never talked about going to Brandeis. I figured that was my business. Let me focus on the politics. Essentially, in short version, my, my communication to the audience was, I don't have a liberal speech and a conservative speech and, you know, black speech and a white speech. I feel very strongly about things. I don't think politics are ready for me. I don't think I'm ready for politics. Because remember, this is Berkeley, you know, in the 60s. So I'm thinking, you know, my view of politicians were people who talked out of both sides of their mouths, walked very gently down the middle of the road, playing it safe. I didn't want to have anything to do with that. So that was sort of my, you know, overly exaggerated view of politicians. I'm not interested. I answered questions. So... Long meeting. Finally, they decided about two something in the morning that whoever got 50 percent plus one of the votes would be considered the black unity candidate that they would present to the Democrats. And about two thirty in the morning, they roll out this blackboard. They had seven names. So somebody said, well, take Ryan Dellum's name off because the brother's not interested. I'm, Thank God. Get me out of here. You know, it's an all night meeting. Right. <laughs> And so they got ready to take my name off. And this wonderful woman with this beautiful gray afro said, hold it, hold it, hold it. Before you take the young man's name off, and I was young then, she said, I want to ask a question. So, you know, being raised, you know, by good Southern folks, I stood up. I said, yes, ma'am. And she said, um, suppose, I heard what you said, but suppose the community wanted you to run. Would you run and run on your own terms, not anybody else's, on your terms? So I'm thinking, whew, right between the eyes, this is a question of integrity. This woman is asking me, am I for real? Am I just blowing a lot of hot air? You know, am I, who are you really? 
And I've revisited that answer many times because it changed the course of my life. Because I looked at her and I said, ma'am, that's the only way anybody ought to be in politics. They ought to be open to ideas and consultation, but at the end of the day, it ought to be on their own terms because people have the right to know exactly who you are. That's the only way anybody ought to run. That's the only way I would ever run if I were running. Leave his name on the list because he's going to get one vote. And I'm going, hey, lady, don't do it. Come on, man, let me get out of here. And in that moment, one of the guys who brought me to the meeting, Don Hopkins, grabbed me by the back of the jacket, and he said, shut up and sit down, man, we're going to win this damn thing, and pulled me down into the seat. That moment passed in silence, and the rest is history. It sure is. Yeah. That was, was a defining moment it was. with that woman. So I get home, like about 3 o'clock in the morning, you know, 3 o'clock, where you been? No, it wasn't that kind of party, <laughs> trust me. I'm a candidate for the Berkeley City Council. What? What are you going to do? What? I thought we were going to Brandeis University. I said, yeah, I can't. F Let me get some sleep. Maybe I'll figure this thing out. We'll figure it out tomorrow morning. I didn't go to sleep. 